Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another edition of Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I am Adam Hildebrandt, joined, of course, by Tiger head coach Josh Blankenship. Coach, uh, a strong effort last week. I uh, just couldn't quite make the winning plays down the stretch. Uh, as you kind of went back and evaluated, what do you think made the difference towards the end of that game? Uh, time of possession. Uh, second half, uh, they just were able to move the ball just enough to keep getting first downs. And then even when we got some turnovers uh, and got the ball back, uh, we'd get a, you know, a good run, get a first down, penalty put us back, and then we had we had issues digging out of those penalties, had to punt it. And uh, even as strong as our defense was for the first half, and then that third quarter getting two turnovers, uh, we just weren't able to finish. Uh, on the, the fake field goal, the execution didn't quite pan out, but obviously the scheme was there, the, the play was there. Was that something you all had had in your back pocket for a while? Is that something that, that yeah. you guys have been working on? Yeah, it's uh, it's the same thing we did in the playoff game last year against Owasso. It's uh, I don't even like to call it a fake. It's more kind of like the swinging gate on uh, you know, PAT. We've got Will Height standing out there by the sideline on the numbers, and if they don't see him, we're going to raise up and throw it to him. If they see him, we'll send it back in and kick it. And uh, it's just kind of one of those check with me type of situations, and it was there. So gave gave him the thumbs up, and we were off, and just weren't able to get it done. I had wondered if, if that was the case, if Jinx had noticed and like lined up over the top, if you just motioned him back yeah. in, because that's not entirely dissimilar to what you do on, on PATs and that sort of stuff. Right, and that's the way we've approached it. I mean, we've been working it all year in, in practice, and this was the first opportunity we tried to do it. Um, thought it was kind of an ideal time to do it because uh, it was loud, chaotic, and they had no timeouts left. Um, you know, we didn't not that we sat there and analyzed every little single detail, but um, thought it was the right thing to do at that moment. Uh, you had uh, got the ball back as was a two and a half ish minutes left, uh, and we're able to go down and, and get in, in you know decent field goal position. Uh, were you happy with the kind of the time management and the execution of that offense on that final drive for the yeah, most part? That's another thing we practice all the time. We call it one minute drill, um, and our guys were were efficient, executed. Uh, I think probably the the biggest play was a play action where uh, the shot over the top to Caleb wasn't there, and we protected really really well, and uh, Owen stayed poised back there, and then fake. Uh, found Cade on the deep over, which was the biggest chunk play probably in that. Uh, and then all the little things in there, the the little runs, the little screens, the the things that, that added up to moving us down the field were, were clutch. As, as I went back and thought about it, it seemed like that was maybe one of the more balanced yeah. offensive games. Was, was that what you guys saw also, or am I off on that? No, I think absolutely. I think the most one of the most balanced games across the board, not just offense. I thought it was the most complimentary football we've played. Uh, the guys played unbelievably hard in every facet. Our defense was lights out for 90% of the game. Um, our special teams were incredible. I mean, the way we were uh, placing the ball on kickoffs, uh, down there to their best player at times, and still able to swarm and – and tackle them inside the 15. I think we had one near the 10. Um, that's huge. I mean, when you're playing in a game that's going to have potentially, you know, razor thin margins and to be able to have the field position we did. Um, but overall, the the way we played was some of the best football we've played all year. And we've got to find a way to finish those things as we move into the playoffs. And we're going to hear from Garrett Lynch a little bit uh, from now. And, and he a, plays a major role in those kickoffs. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, they had two, Jinx had two really good weapons back there in kick returns. If, if, the kicker doesn't put the ball where the other 10 guys are expecting it. Right. How, you know, what is, it seems like there's some potential for chaos there. So that's a, that's a really big role to put it where you want it. It's huge. And a lot of time the coverage guys get kind of uh, seen as the guys not getting the job done. When a lot of times it's about the placement of the ball, uh, you know, within the overall scheme and, and Garrett did a phenomenal job in this game. He's our special teams player of the week. Uh, obviously his punts were huge and flipping the field ball placement, there, hitting the ground and rolling, uh, negating those returns. But, but the kickoff coverage was was definitely a, a result of where he was placing the ball. That's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back to talk some defense in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. Right now, get $200 from TTCU Federal Credit Union when you open a new checking account with direct deposit. What would you buy with $200? Cars, race cars, my own apartment, 100 coloring books, and a puppy. <laughs> or maybe some groceries and a tank of gas. $200 for whatever works for you from TTCU. Because life is better in balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrand alongside Tiger Football head coach Josh Blankenship. Uh, coach, the defense had a, a scoop and score 
and an interception in the end zone. Uh, and that's despite moving some guys to some different positions right. over the last couple of weeks. Do you feel like that defense as a whole is pretty comfortable, even though you've had some some movement in terms of personnel? Yeah, we've been uh, searching for some answers to be more solid on D and feel like we really found some things this past week, um, you know, scheme-wise, uh, starting to get comfortable uh, with some tweaks that we've made. And then obviously the personnel moves are always – uh, the flashiest things, but uh, uh, Will Height got some reps there at uh, D end and and was a game changer there. Um, uh, Dietrich uh, moving him back to safety, uh, giving him a little bit more freedom to roam uh, was obviously huge in, in the plays that he was making in addition to the pick that he made to keep him from scoring. Uh, Derek Osmond had a phenomenal game uh, on the edge and and when those guys are going to play as hard as they did and, and really understand what they're doing in the scheme, uh, you get the productivity that we got against a really good offense. Yeah, and they were uh, – you mentioned time of possession earlier. They were able to keep the ball, but they they only had, you know, a couple of real big explosive plays, which they've got an offense that's certainly capable of doing that. Uh, they did have some some breakout plays in the in the passing game in terms of out of the backfield to running backs. What were they doing to, to kind of utilize that and, and – hit you there oh just diverting our eyes and trying to uh, get guys off those backers I mean one of them I can think of in particular was they they made it look like a fake toss boot and it was essentially a a throwback kind of a little gadget play and and they caught us on a few uh there were a couple of shots that they had down the sideline where uh we we actually liked the coverage that we were in and and you've got Dietrich right there in kind of that skiff area and and they were just able to get it over his head just barely and, and get a big play. You know, they get to play, too. They get to skin, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they had a couple of good answers for us down the stretch. Uh, we, we've talked some early in the year in particular about Austin Newell and Lane Condry and their kind of growth as linebackers alongside Dietrich Moore. Well, Dietrich's playing more safety now. Uh, how did they kind of hold up with him in a different yeah. spot and, and, and kind of trying to hold down the, that linebacking core? Uh, Newell had an unbelievable game. He was uh, downhill, physical, uh, even – man, he, he's, uh, he gets knocked for not being the fastest guy on the field, but uh, he had one where he was spying their quarterback, and we had great coverage. Quarterback scrambled out to his right, and Newell just matched him and ran him down uh, down the line of scrimmage and tackled him for either – it was either a no gain or a loss. It was an unbelievable play, and he played like that all night. Condry's been the, uh, I wouldn't say surprise, but he's been the uh, the splash this year that, uh, you know, we certainly hope uh, guys that go from sophomore to junior year can become, and and he's exploded onto the scene. Uh, you know, obviously another touchdown for him, a defensive touchdown yep. uh, was huge, um, and he just keeps getting better and better and, and definitely making his presence known. You mentioned uh, Will Hyde and Osmond, a couple guys that, that played end in that game. Was there anybody else who stood out to you on the, on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, a bunch of guys, uh, you know, uh, Taylor Griffin had a great game. A lot of times those corners go unnoticed, um, you know, but uh, he had great coverage on that receiver on that shot that Dietrich uh, picked off. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The guys up front, uh, Demarius Thomas had another great game. Shane Wyatt had one of his best games. We had a freshman playing nose guard, John Broll, uh, really flash, and he's going to be a special player, and he's really starting to settle in. You know, he's a freshman, and he's really starting to look like an upperclassman here towards the end of the season. So we got big things. Um, we expect of him, but but really pleased with how all those guys are playing right now. You know, we, we've talked some certainly this year about freshman playing, obviously with Caden Jones and, and how electric he is. It seems like if you're going to be a, a lineman and an interior lineman in mm-hmm. particular, that might be even more challenging as freshman just because you're simply smaller than most of the guys that you're matching up against. Yeah, most of the time. Uh, John's, John's thick. He's got some good size to him, and uh, I can't wait to see what he's going to become. But uh, that is, you know, as sophomores, in addition to that, I mean, we've got – uh, Ricardo Fernandez playing, uh, you know, he played center for a lot of the beginning part of the season on Edo line and, and we bumped him to guard. Uh, he's a warrior. I mean, he's, he's, he's battling his tail off and, you know, as a sophomore, he's not quite as big as he's going to be as a junior and a senior, but, uh, doing great things as well. That's broken arrow tiger head football coach, Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is inside tiger football brought to you by rib crib. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, we are now open for appointments and we are fully prepared for your safety in our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms and will continue to limit visitors. And we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24-7. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries. And we're open for your appointments, from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. 
Ascension St. John continues to care for you, as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Got a couple players joining us now. We've got Owen Jones and Garrett Lynch talking some Tiger football with us. Uh, Owen, let, let's start with you. Uh, obviously, your uh, first year starter this year. How much more comfortable are you now in this offense than you were, say, at the beginning of the year? Um, well, throughout the season, I've definitely gotten more comfortable uh, just going through reps and then getting with the team more. And just throughout the season, it's just gotten better a lot. At, at what point uh, during the off season did you realize you might have a chance to to start at quarterback this year? Uh, really, as soon as I got back from my other sport, I really thought I would. That begs the question: What other sport do you play? Uh, I also wrestle. Okay, very nice. And wrestling wraps up when uh, February ish, March? Uh, early March. Okay, so do you have a chance to participate in spring ball then? Oh uh, yes. I do. Okay, nice. So at least you you have some overlap, but but not too bad. What, where do you feel like you've experienced the most uh, growth as a quarterback this season? Um, definitely timing, probably. Just getting uh, timing down with the receivers. Does being a wrestler help you play quarterback? And if so, how? Maybe with feet work or footwork, just like because they both have a lot of it. Okay, there you go. Footwork is the key. All right, let's go over to you, Garrett. Uh, Obviously, you've been instrumental in the kicking game over the course of this year. Uh, let, let's start with 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 punting, and now let's just do this in general. Kicking in general. Did you play soccer? Like, how did you get into the the kicking game itself? So I played soccer basically my whole life, and in January of my ninth grade year, I decided I want to try football, and so I decided my best option to do that would be kicking, and so I came in my ninth grade year, and then. Uh, it just went on from there, and then I stuck with football till till now, and it's worked out for me really well. Wait, are you still playing soccer also? No, I dropped soccer in like May of 2021, I believe. Okay, so some some crossover, but but yeah. not currently. Yeah, not bad. Uh, what is uh, in on punting specifically? What is something about punting that most people don't know, or or that they might be surprised to learn? Um, the biggest thing about punting is. You don't want to try to hit the ball as hard as you can. The best option to control it more is just your drop. And the better you drop the ball, the better hit you're going to have. And that will give you more power. Did it take you a while to get that down? Because obviously a football is shaped yeah. different than a soccer ball. Yeah, it was like the first year I was so confused. It was such a big transition. And then it, it got better from there. So uh, on the subject of not kicking it as hard as you can, uh, oftentimes with kickoffs, you're not trying to kick it as hard as you can either. You're trying to put it in specific spots. Yeah. How, how challenging is that technique in terms of, you know, you, you've got a drop when you're punting. Now you're trying to kick it off a tee and put it in a specific spot. Yeah, so on kickoffs, you got to – the way you angle your body more on the hit, it's a whole different technique than punting. Um, so the whole – your your aiming points on kickoffs and punts are going to be a lot different, and it's it's a little easier than punting is. But um, it's definitely sometimes a challenge. Not uh, starting football until your freshman year, uh, do you feel more comfortable now in the in the physical part of the game? Because every once in a while, you got to step up and, and make a tackle. Yeah, for sure. My first year, I was like, I didn't want to get hit at all. <laughs> and I was always like, no. But uh, I've definitely gotten open to taking hits, and I'm perfectly fine with it now. Nice. Well, there you have it. Owen Jones, Garrett Lynch joining us on this edition of Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. We'll be back with more in just a moment. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard, even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football one more time. Brought to you by Rib Crib. Adam Hildebrand alongside Coach Josh Blankenship. Coach, uh, the weather shortened your practice schedule yep. by a week, uh, and, and you didn't know until the middle of the week. So uh, how has that affected what you guys have been trying to do in terms of preparing for this game on, uh, well, now on Thursday? Yeah, the, the tough part is you're switching right in the middle of the week what your, uh, your plan is for the week as far as uh, practice schedule more than anything. Game plan uh, didn't get disrupted, uh, so that that's a positive. Uh, the guys got to adapt, though, to a uh, quick turnaround. Uh, it's a lot like a sudden change in the middle of a game. Uh, we've got to adapt, and everybody's everybody's in the same boat. Moore has to adapt. All the other teams that are switching to Thursday have to all of a sudden adapt. And, uh, you know, when I spoke to the team yesterday, I said it's similar to a lightning delay. You know, it's, it's what team is going to come out and respond the best. 
uh, given the change. And it really amounts to that. Unfortunately, at least it's for a home game as well. So you're not yeah, you know, traveling in addition to that. Uh, what have you seen from Moore as you've prepared for them this week? Really dynamic offense, uh, uh, very similar to uh, probably some Adam State teams I had in the past. Uh, they throw the ball all over the, uh, all over the field. Uh, that's their identity. They throw it as many times as they can. Uh, they've got a little quarterback that is extremely accurate, very quick release, uh, can buy a lot of time and scoot around. Uh, good old line where they, they, they keep you honest with enough good run game. Uh, and, and underneath the chains, RPO stuff that uh, you can't just drop eight on them. Um, defensively, they're a little unorthodox. Uh, they're still, like everybody else, they're going to try and out hatch you in the box, but they do it with a lot more uh, you know, DB and linebacker-type bodies than, than the bigger bodies on the front line. That's what we'll see from more coming up on Thursday. Of course, we'll have the game for you on AeroVision as well. That's Tiger head coach Josh Blankenship. I'm Adam Hildebrand, and this has been Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crit.